Just for a quick introduction from the Terraform side, let's have a look at the policy. So in my code, what I've done is I've created a separate module for Azure policy here like this. And within the Azure template, what I'm doing here is I'm calling this particular template and uh, I'm not passing basically any, any specific set of parameters. But if you look at the modules, uh, I have the dedicated module for my Azure policy. Uh, so again, I have the three input types. So this is just a management block. It will not have any specific tag. So what I'm doing is uh, I have three definition, uh, three different uh, sections. Uh, first is the uh, policy definition section, policy set definition section, and policy assignment section. So why I have, uh, why do I have these three section is uh, because let's go to the Azure policy. Uh, Terraform Azure policy, um, the documentation of the Terraform website out there, it would be easier to understand. So to uh, define any policies, uh, any Azure policy in, uh, with the help of Terraform, you are required to create uh, any three uh, type of resource. For example, as per the documentation, you can create a definition, you can create the assignment and you can create the set definition. So definition is the policy definition. And then set definition is your policy in, uh, initiative, which is collection of policies. And the policy assignment is assigning uh, the uh, the policy to uh, to Azure portal. Uh, so assigning any specific policy or the assigning initiative basically. So these are the three section and then remediation. I have already demonstrated how you can remediate, but if you would like to remediate from the Terraform itself, you can remediate from here itself, here as well. Okay, so uh, for that specific reason, what I've done, any policy definition I have defined here in this particular section, any uh, policy uh, set definition I have defined here in the, uh, which is my initiatives, all my initiatives I have defined here in this particular section and all my assignment I have defined on the separate file just for the uh, simplicity of the reading the policy. So let's say for very first policy, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm reading all my uh, tags, which I would like to apply. So in the variable section, what I have done is I have created a variable. Okay. I would like to create a managed uh, mandatory track policy. So I have defined the uh, map type of property in which I have mentioned, okay, these are my mandatory track with these values which every resource needs to have. So for that, I'm creating a policy. So any resources, uh, any uh, tag, any number of tags, which I would like to create uh, with the help of my, or manage with the help of the Azure policies, I am going to add here in the parameters. And once you have the parameters, let me go and make it uh, change the color. Here in this case, I have these number of tags uh, uh, which I, I want. I also have uh, some of the tags which I would like to inherit from the resource group. Let's say uh, there are certain tags which I would like to uh, like, which I would like my any, my resources to inherit from the resource group. So let's say I have created a um, key vault in a particular resource group. So I would like to create uh, or inherit certain resources from the resource group. So for I have a policy for that as well. Then I have the application tags which I would like to follow for, for any specific tags. I have the uh, VMS key used to follow. For example, I would like to provision the policy uh, uh, to allow provisioning the, uh, the virtual machine from the given specific uh, set of SKUs, right? So these are the different parameters. Now let if, if you go to the definition um, and just for the simplicity uh, here, what they are doing is they are creating the policy definition and it requires some of the mandatory parameters, for example, for name of the policy, type of the policy, mod. If you uh, compare these things with the uh, policy JSON parameters, you will find all those things in the JSON as well. But if you are you don't want JSON to follow, and if you find uh, Terraform uh, more friendly, or if you are a Terraform 
resource then uh, that would be easier to uh, you know follow this particular pattern or the SCL language basically. Now next you need to follow the uh, metadata and policy rule and the policy parameters which if you look at the let me go ahead and check the policy policy definitions so if I go to for example any policy basically you can take parameters metadata parameter and and and, and 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 policy rule right similarly metadata parameters policy rules so what i am doing is i am running the uh, for each loop on my map type of parameters which will have the tag value and tag name and value so my key would the k is k is equal to key v is equal to value so the key will have the name of the tag and we will have the value of the tag so what i am doing is i am creating a policy name with the adding tag to let's say environment adding tag to uh, cost center or anything like that and policy type would be custom mod equal to all and then the display name i am dynamically generating the display name right and uh, this is the metadata so uh, you can use the metadata you can define the metadata either with this particular these kind of tags but i prefer to pass on the tags like this the benefit of passing the tags like this you can pass the variables like this if you follow the uh, this json code uh, function which is uh, introduced in uh, terraform 0 0.12 Okay, next is the policy rule. Uh, again, if you read it carefully, this is the JSON representation. So basically this JSON code helps us to uh, define the JSON structure inside the Terraform Hashicorp language. So inside the JSON, uh, JSON code function, I'm passing the, the uh, policy definition uh, in, in the JSON format, right? We have already gone through the definition so by having this thing in place what we are doing is we are iterating through the loop and with the single uh, policy uh, definition uh, block or the resource type block we are able to provision any number of uh, tagging policies right next uh, is again uh, tagging to any specific type of resources instead of tagging to resource group and next policy uh, the same patterns i have followed uh, but this time i'm following the pattern uh, for inheriting uh, the tags for from the resource group so i would like to inherit the tags from the resource group next is i have the policies which is for the allowed location so here i'm passing the parameters as the location type and then uh, once i have the location type uh, available I'm passing it to the uh, location. Basically, what uh, this particular policy is saying is if the uh, uh, location of your resources is not uh, from the collection of location which you pass on, then your resource should not be able to provision. So let's say this is my policy and now I would like to create an initiative. So uh, you can see that uh, this policy, you can create the policy initiative with the help of uh, policy set definition so set definition what it does is basically it, uh, it can have the multiple uh, initiative set so uh, for example let's take a single simple example here what i'm doing is i'm trying to create the initiative say or set set is the collection of policy or initiatives uh, so what it expect is you you need to provide the name of your initiative type of initiative display name description which is optional and then metadata and then you need to define you need to provide the uh, policy definition reference for example if uh, uh, your initiative uh, what are the different policies your initiative will have right what are the different collection of policies your initiative will have in this case right now i, I just have one policy so i'm just uh, passing the one uh, policy definition a reference but uh, you 
not one sorry uh, it's my mistake uh, if you see that i'm using the dynamic uh, uh, dynamic uh, object creation in the terraform here and i'm it, looping through all my policy definitions so any number of policy definitions which i have created in this particular section here for example at the top here i am basically iterating the loop through so it will uh, this particular set will contain those number of set of uh, policy definitions so if it has five rules then these five blocks will be created similar to here as well now one of the example which i would like to give you here is the policy about the core networking interface which uh, where i am uh, adding two definitions so either you create the dynamic block wherein you can iterate through the loop and create this particular policy def, uh, definition reference dynamically or if you want to define the specific uh, fixed set of policy definition references uh, like this you can define like this but in this case uh, your policy set definition will know okay i will have my policy collection will have uh, only three type of or uh, two type of policies uh, it will cover and if any any time in future if you require to cover any third type of policy in, in the same initiative then you need to amend the code whereas in the other case wherein i am maintaining it through the uh, dynamic loop or the dynamic resource type it just based on the parameters it will automatically adjust the uh, the loop through so that's that's the more advanced way of maintaining a three now the next one is about passing out the parameters to uh, to the uh, from the from the initiative so let's say uh, in certain policies uh, our certain policy has the parameters uh, right so uh, we would like to have the uh, policy parameters to be passed on from the initiative so how do you pass on the parameter from the initiative uh, you need to use the parameters block and then you can pass on the parameters like this uh, so for example my policy one was asking for this particular parameter which i am passing from here which i have defined policy 2 was asking for some different parameter which i am asking providing it from here and uh, once this particular assignment or initiative or set is going to be assigned uh, somewhere then that particular assignment will require to pass the parameter for example this is my one of my assignment which contains the uh, so assignment basically uh, in the assignment either you assign a policy or you assign the initiatives right we have seen from the azure portal i'm just uh, describing it from the terraform perspective so here in this section what we are doing it here we are basically saying okay this is the assignment uh, of the uh, logonetic workspace for using this particular policy set and this assignment requires to pass the log analytics workspace id so what i am doing is i am reading the word log analytics name uh, using the data uh, data uh, attribute data type and once i am going to have the log analytics id i am passing the id as a parameter to the assignment of my policy right so this is how you can use the policy definition policy set which is the initiative and the policy assignment using the terraform and once you have the policy assignment and the initiatives in place you can anytime go ahead and use the uh, the policies uh, remediation and the uh, compliance mode at the over nowadays some of your resources your azure resources for example uh, would have the built-in policies configurations available for example i'm i'm opening one of my virtual machines here and in my virtual machine uh, if you look at carefully i have my po policy uh, settings available so as the azure ex uh, growing uh, day by day they are trying to bring in more and more features to your individual resources so now you can see that individual resources some of resources also have the policy section so this is just uh, one thing I'm, i would like to uh, describe it here so what what we are saying here is uh, these are the number of policies uh, this particular resource is uh, covered by 
So this particular resource will have uh, affected by these number of policies and out of these policies, these are the policies which are compliant and these are the two policies which are non-compliant, right? So having the non-compliant policies in place, you can, your administrative team can go and, and check, okay, uh, this is non-compliant. So what do I need to do is either we need to remediate this particular thing and then uh, you need to say, okay, guys, you, you're not following this standard which, is, which you are supposed to do while provisioning the resources, right? So these are the this is uh, these are the more uh, key focused area when in uh, Azure you know offers you to follow your organization to follow the industry standard best practices in order to uh, provision your resources with the uh, with with respect to the security with respect to uh, the availability cost and all, all the kind of different benefits which uh, Azure policies brings in. Uh, for your organization. So this is really, really helpful. Please uh, go to the uh, Azure policy section, uh, read out the uh, re read out the, uh, the documentation and the built-in policies and then customize this if, if you would like to. Azure policy, I'll just try to give you the Azure policy documentation. You'll find hundreds of policies in, in, in your in the Azure documentation, which you can read it. You can see that these are the number of policies which are, which are available, okay? I hope this was helpful. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching it.